someone didn't make the band shouldn't be here and I hope whoever owned this they made the home safe The day had finally arrived that we had been looking forward to since we began our trip in New York. The day that we would start on the epic journey of the Dalton Highway. The Dalton Highway is a 414 mile road which begins in Livengood, north of Fairbanks, passes through the Arctic Circle and ends at Dead Horse near the Arctic Ocean and the Prudhoe Bay oil fields. on the Dalton, you'll, the Elliott will end, okay. and the Dalton will begin, and then a hundred miles in, you'll continue traveling north. Gotcha. And he says that there are a couple of huge sinkholes, don't fall in the sinkholes. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, Good advice. <laughs> The Dalton Highway was built in 1974 as a supply route for the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System. The majority of the road is still made of gravel and dirt and is generally only used by truckers bringing supplies north. It's one of America's most isolated highways and one of the world's most dangerous roads. Due to being built on permafrost, so the road surface changes frequently and rapidly. Harsh and quickly changeable weather conditions pass the Arctic Circle and the lack of facilities, services or even residence for hundreds of miles. Cell phone signal is non-existent and even some satellite phones don't work in the Brooks mountain range. Due to these challenges and the promise of spectacular unique scenery, this road holds a massive attraction for adventure bikers from all over the world who attempt to drive up and back this desolate stretch of road. After we left the Dalton Highway sign heading north, a million emotions were juggling inside our heads. This is the moment that we had planned and waited for years. We were excited and full of trepidation, but also with a little fear, thinking of the possible dangers and difficulties that this road could create. However, whatever was going to be ahead of us, we were not turning back. Our target was to arrive on the Dalton Highway in the middle of summer to have the best chance of good road condition. However, that was still not a guarantee. Too dry and the road becomes extremely dusty, which increased the danger when we meet trucks due to the low visibility, both for us to see the road and for the truck driver to see us. With rain, this dirt road becomes slippy, especially on the hills and bends. As one biker comically described it to us, it would be like driving on snot.
So far, the road conditions seem good. Some places a little sticky or soft. However, never a moment that we thought our tires wouldn't cope. from the Dalton Highway. Woohoo! This oh my is God. spectacular. Fabulous. We have done about, what, 20 miles of it? Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Ah, it's yeah. amazing sceneries and the road is pretty good. I think it's very good. Mixture of dirt and a few dodgy patches, but so far so good. So continue on through the way and keep going north. Okay, let's go. The Dalton Highway is entirely constructed on permafrost, so ground shifting with the creation of large sinkholes was very common in the summer. Sinkholes. Don't fall in the sinkholes. Many bikers had warned us about this danger and recommended us that no matter how beautiful the scenery was, we had to constantly keep a vigilant eye on the road ahead to avoid the possibility of an accident. So then, a big puddle, and then keep it going. This is only been done maybe I don't know, a few days ago. The roads keep shifting to the right, and then more potholes are created, and they get bigger. I mean, you can. Not funny. And again, this is even bigger. Look at that. Again, I can fit my whole leg into it. Would you like to put your front tire in there? I would not. And unfortunately, they're not marked. They just left to people to find out
Ah, this is fabulous. Oh, it's amazing. It's just it yeah. brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. The best road ever. <laughs> <laughs> There's miles of dirt out in the wilderness. It's fabulous. And the silence when nothing moves. We are very, very few people on the road. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, super. Brilliant. We continue on. Okay, go. Keep going north. There were a few paved sections on the Dalton, but happily, not too many. The highway needs constant maintenance, with crews working seven days a week. The new top layer was deep, so we kept to the left of it, However, we needed to be on constant guard for an oncoming truck, which wouldn't be expecting two motorcycles in his path. We crossed over into the fresh layer before the crest of the hill and carried on safely. The Yukon River Bridge is a half-mile-long wooden floor girder bridge crossing the large Yukon River. The bridge carries both the Dalton Highway and the Alaskan Pipeline, and it is the only bridge crossing the Yukon River in Alaska. It was opened in 1975, and before that, goods had to be transported across the river in boats during the summer and by trucks driving on ice during the winter. However, that left many weeks in spring and autumn when it was not possible to cross and transport had to be disrupted. Yukon River Camp is one of the three fuel stops along the Dalton Highway and it's a staggering 119 miles until the next one in Coldfoot Camp. Travelers are warned not to depend on always finding fuel here and we found to our surprise a sign saying that they would not have fuel till Thursday. Luckily, we arrived on Friday, so we were able to fill up and keep on going. <laughs> the coolest petrol station in the world. Oh yeah. We passed several bikers on this solitary road and we saluted their success at being on the return trip. However, we were most impressed with the cyclists who we passed. These people have to cycle this challenging terrain while carrying all their food and water with them, as it may be days between service camps. Now that's seriously hardcore. One of the constant dangers on the Dalton Highway are the large articulated trucks who use the road commercially. These truck drivers are incredibly skilled to navigate this dangerous road. However, with frequent hills, some as steep as 16% gradient, the trucks need speed to keep the momentum going up these hills and often kick up rocks and stones into the path of oncoming travelers.
Otherwise, we found the truckers friendly and often waved or slowed down when passing us. This place was just incredible. You've no idea how vast and how beautiful it is until you see it for yourself. If it wasn't for the sign, we wouldn't have known that we passed the Arctic Circle as the scenery didn't dramatically change, as I naively thought it would. However, shortly afterwards, my Garmin navigation stopped working, and other bikers described the same issue once they had passed the Arctic Circle. Fortunately, there was only one road to Dead Horse, so we knew exactly where to go. At one point, we came across a small fire on the side of the highway, but as we progressed, the smoke appeared more diffuse across our path. We were aware of extensive forest fire throughout Alaska this summer. However, we had not been warned on any fires on the Dalton Highway, which might impede our journey. As you can see, there is still smoke coming out of there. There's the left side of the hill is all being burnt. Now, this is, you see, this is a little fire here and there. And we had gone through where the fire has come up right to the to the road, but it wasn't safe to stop. The the road was too narrow. So, but yeah, there is still plenty of fires going on. And 2.5 million acres of land are at the moment on fire in uh, in Alaska. So, it's a big place, but it's a lot of fires. So we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully, they will never they won't close the road ahead of us. Coldfoot is a well-equipped rest stop, approximately halfway along the Dalton Highway. It is said that the name was derived from travellers getting cold feet about making the 240-mile journey north to Dead Horse. Coldfoot Camp provided us a welcome place to get food, fuel and a safe place to sleep for a while. There was certainly no fear of us getting cold feet. We were keen to keep on going. So we made it to Coldfoot. We've had an amazing day. Stunning scenery on the Dalton Highway, really cool gravel and dirt roads. Um, it's just been brilliant. So we're gonna camp here tonight in Coldfoot. Tomorrow through the bay. Yeah. Maybe it was the excitement, the constant daylight, or maybe it was the noise from the trucks which prevented us from sleeping. But at 4 a.m. we decided to stop fighting it and satisfy our urge to get back on the Dalton. Morning. I was just after climbing a big hill and this is where we are. Not a bad way to start the day. There are no fuel services between Coldfoot and Dead Horse, so travellers must bring additional fuel with them to make the 240 mile distance. However, it's also advisable to carry extra fuel in case for some reason the road is impassable or closed, 
and you need to turn around and drive back. The Trans-Alaskan Pipeline travel most of the time beside or in the vicinity of the Dalton Highway. However, it's only from now on that it became more noticeable due to the lack of trees. The Trans-Alaskan Pipeline is one of the largest pipeline systems in the world, with a total length of 800 miles, or about 1,200 kilometers. It was constructed between 1975 and 1977, and connects the oil field at Prudhoe Bay with Valdez on the south coast of Alaska. Constructing such a large infrastructure at these latitudes and on permafrost was a huge challenge for the engineers. Most of the pipeline is constructed above ground because the heat of the oil would thaw the permafrost, but being exposed to Arctic weather had to cope with a thermal excursion between winter and summer of up to 80 degrees Celsius. In fact, in the summer, the actual total length of the pipeline increases by 5 miles. Also had to be able to cope with forest fire, possible gunshots and every natural disaster, including earthquakes. So, considering that after nearly 50 years it's still fully functional, they must have done a good job. The Atagun Pass is the steep, windy passage through the stunning Brooks Mountain Range. It rises to a height of 1,444 metres above sea level and can be in an extremely treacherous stretch of road due to common snow and ice, even in summer, making the steep incline and descent even more dangerous. The weather was favourable when we arrived at its base. We managed the climb easily and were greeted with breathtaking views on our way down the far side, making it all worthwhile. This road is so treacherous is because overnight... While we were stopped to look at some large sinkholes and the shift in the road's surface, we saw something that no biker likes to see and it really made me shiver. Someone didn't make the bend. And I hope he's okay. The bike is not really seriously damaged, but uh, shouldn't be here, and I hope whoever owned this, they made the home safe. We never found out what happened to the rider, but we hope they got home okay. Devastated by mosquitoes, so... There's a particularly robust type of mosquito this far north, and they were all over us as soon as we stopped. Luckily, we found a clever way to eat lunch. We 
We came up to a very large stretch of roadworks and were guided safely through by a pilot car. These long stretches of unfinished road can pose a challenge for bikers due to deep mud, dusty gravel and large construction vehicles. So we had to be extremely vigilant every step of the way. The last 60 miles into Dead Horse Town were paved, yet there were still reminders about how treacherous this road can be. Dead Horse is an alcohol-free town, so it was unlikely to be as a result of careless recreational drivers. We made it! We made it the whole length of the Dalton Highway and had arrived safely in Dead Horse. We made it! <laughs> we made it! We made it! Made it. Made it. it. <laughs> Top of the Arctic Circle. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> so, we made it! Bye -bye. Hey. and after a short bus drive through the Pudo Bay oil fields, we were standing in the Arctic Ocean. We couldn't be happier. We thought nothing would beat the exhilaration of reaching Pudo Bay. However, we made many good friends along the way with who we shared this incredible journey and we celebrated together and joined up for a joyful ride back down the highway. Like surgeon-like ones. And actually, effective. <laughs> they do work. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. You wonder why we can't walk with these in the hotel. Might be an extra layer to keep us warm though. It is cold. Yeah. Can we put all my waterproofs on?
took a picture and I uh, tried to stand up on the bike, but I almost lost my balance. <laughs> 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 We survived we it. Completed the Dalton Highway, we survived. We it. <laughs> Officially survived it. We can uh, say now that we absolutely have driven the Dalton Highway. Two of us, yes. the two Honda. We're back! We're all alive. We've done it! it. So, I'm so happy. Very good. I'm so happy. So tonight, celebration time. Yeah. Tomorrow, a new challenge. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Because they just can't America's most isolated highway, one of the world's most dangerous roads, and the best time of our lives.